Hello Dumbo viewers, this is uh, Guardian welcoming you back to Tabletop Simulator and today's game is Bleeding Kansas. Bleeding Kansas is published by Decision Games and is designed by... I never remember his name. John Paniski. Uh, Bleeding Kansas is an area control game with that's about a war, but it's not a war game. Um, and I think that's important to understand before you start playing Bleeding Kansas, because if you expect it to be a war game, you'll be disappointed. It's not. Um, and that doesn't make it bad or not a great game. It's just not a war game. Um, it is instead an area control game in which the pro-slavery and anti-slavery forces during Civil War era Kansas are fighting to ensure that their party is the one that is uh, accepted prior to the Civil War. Um, the game takes place over a certain number of turns. Uh, very specifically, it takes place over 11, 22, 33, <clears throat> 44 rounds. Although, how long a round is, is variable. And that's an important thing to keep in mind as you're playing the game. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the map, and then we'll talk about how the game actually works. The most important counties in this game are the ones that are populated, the ones that have one or more towns in them, like Osage, or Franklin, or Likens. If a town is black, it is a neutral town. It cannot be damaged, it cannot be harmed, but you know that that particular town is worth uh, points in an election. If you can control a Shawnee County, for instance, you're going to get more seats in the election. Uh, let me really quickly see here if you get more, if they count more, if they're more heavily populated. I think that they do, but I'm not positive. Um, <laughs> nope, one county is as good as a another. <clears throat> That's a little disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. Um, that does annoy me a little bit, actually. I really think that um, I thought would be important, but in any case, uh, so what matters most is having faction points in order to determine who controls the county. So let's look at Shawnee as an example. Shawnee is where the anti-slavery forces have their capital in Topeka. <clears throat> in addition, we also see one blue anti-cube. This means the faction strength of Shawnee County at the start of the game is three points. <clears throat> but let's look at another example. Let's look at Douglas County, which has Lawrence as a blue town, Lecompton as a brown town, and one cube of each. This cube is considered tied. Now, if you would, uh, let's, because it starts as tied, in order to determine who controls Douglas County, we would look at every adjacent county. And whoever had more counties there would actually get control of Douglas as well. This even includes counties that normally wouldn't matter, like for instance Clay County, which has no uh, which has no large population set up uh, settlements there. But it could be important to say get control of Davis County uh, for Fort Riley and Junction City. Um, this is wrong. Manhattan is in Riley County, not Pottawatomie County. Come on, man. I lived in Riley County for many years uh, when I was getting my, my PhD. Uh, Manhattan is definitely in Riley County. Although it might be one of those things where it's like split down the middle. Where like half is in Pottawatomie and maybe half is in Riley. I don't know that for a fact. Um, it's been too long since I've been there. But anyways, um, so that's the map. 
Uh, in addition, we have the federal troops represented by this lovely looking cannon. Um, the federal troops basically stop another person from burning a settlement. So we can't burn Leavenworth unless somebody moves the federal troops. So each turn, you're going to play one of three cards. And you're going to pick one symbol or put as your faction start. You get both symbols. And we'll break down each action as they come up. Um, but what you do need to know for now is that certain actions put markers on the election track. When we get to an election, uh, we then shift into a quick election and then we continue the game. Do note that as the rules clearly state, the 1854 election was heavily marked with voter fraud. And that's why uh, there's a, an election the year afterwards. So this, this level does matter, but only because you get VPs depending on who has more spaces controlled on the election track. And you also get VPs based on elections. And lastly, you can also get a VP if you ever have all six or six of the seven symbols in your hand at the same time, you discard your entire hand. Um, I say let's get started. So first off, we're going to draw two cards for each side. And then we're going to roll dice. And whoever gets the higher number goes first. So this is the die roll for the Pro Forces. And they come up with a four. Can the anti-forces do better? They get a one. So that means the pro-slavery forces go first. So at the beginning of every turn, you always draw cards. So you always have three cards in your hand. Um, this is actually a victory point. Uh, I didn't plan this, but we could discard our entire hand of three cards and get a victory point. Um, I'm not going to do that this early in the game, but it might be something to consider later on. So let's talk about the cards. The top left of every card has two symbols in it. If it is a neutral card or your opponent's card, it's got your opponent's faction color on it, you can take one of those two actions. In this case, the skirmish and the move action. However, if you have one like this that has your faction start, you can do either one action twice or both actions. So not saying one action twice just makes a more powerful action. Um, and we'll go over that one that actually happens. Um, there's flavor text on each card that explains why this is important to the wars uh, in Bleeding Kansas. Um, but other than that, the cards are all basically the same. Um, I'll get more into my, my thoughts about the game later on, but one thing I want to bring up now, it's kind of a shame there's not an actual event on each card that offers some sort of cool rule breaker or something that kind of changes the game a bit. The way the game is is perfectly fine, and I love it, but it would just take it one step farther, actually, in my opinion if there were actual events on the cards and not just flavor text, which is very interesting flavor text, don't get me wrong. So, as the pro player, I want to look at my board and I want to see what opportunities I might have. And I see one potential one right here. I could get control of Lynn County in an election if I burned Mount City. That would give me two faction points, one for Paris, one for my cube, to the anti-players one point their cube because it would have burnt their city. That's a pretty strong opening move. That's a pretty strong opening move. I could also argue the same thing here and Douglas, but let's talk about the other action here, which is cooperation. Um, cooperation, you can move your cube and your opponent's cube to a different county. You can remove a burn, or you can move federal troops to a county with a burn marker. Um, and I think the Southwest Expedition makes a lot of sense to play for that reason. So the first thing we're going to do, um, because of the Missouri County presence, I had to start the game in Bates and Vernon. 
I've got a really easy way to get lots of reinforcements into Lynn County, and I want to make this very strongly one of mine. So the first action I'll take is the burn action. I'm going to go ahead and burn Mount City. You don't roll anything to burn a town. You just have to have at least... Um, you have to have at least one troop there. So the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to place a violence marker on the election track. Um, I am now one step closer to getting some sweet VPs as this game progresses. Um, for my second action, I'm going to use the cooperation and I'm going to move the federal troops into Douglas, into uh, Lynn County. Now, you can move uh, federal troops to any county you want. It doesn't have to be one with a Ford in it. I believe that is true. Yeah. And what this will do is this will stop skirmish, burn, and influence actions here. Uh, basically meaning that until somebody chases the federal troops out of Lynn County, um, this is very clearly my county. And I can move in people, perhaps using my Mare de Sin massacre. I don't know what that means. Sin is French for swans. I don't know what the first part means, though. Anyway, that is it for the anti-player's turn. Very simple turn. Took two actions because it had his faction star. Let's go to the anti-player, shall we? And always start by drawing a card. Now, they have kind of a bad situation here. They have two cards for their opponent. Now, if you play one of your opponent's cards, I said you get to take an action, which is true. They also get to take an action, though. So it would be a really, really bad idea to play either of these cards if I have any other choice whatsoever. And you may not have a choice. So we're going to play Abraham Lincoln instead. Now, I could take a cooperation action, but... I don't really think that makes sense to me. I don't really think there's much benefit in us moving the federal troops. Um, because there's nowhere else that I want to protect. And I'd want to have a burn marker first, ideally, so that I could get away with what I wanted to do. And then, oh no, federal troops, come help us. Um, that would be a pretty cool thing. So let's start we're going to take the other action, which is the politics action. This is one of the simplest actions in the entire game. You literally just put a political marker on the election track and nothing else happens. Now it's tied, and so that wasn't a worthless turn, but it certainly wasn't as impactful, at least early on, as the pro player's turn. So, switching back. Draw a card. Okay. Now, I really don't want the federal troops moving if I can avoid it, so I'm going to play Horus Greeley for the move action. Now, the move action lets you move uh, as many cubes as you want to in one county into any adjacent county, which includes diagonals. Um, you can never have more than five cubes in a particular area, so that's important to remember. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take this cube from Bates County and move it into Lynn County. This is now a pro-slavery stronghold, and it's going to be a very difficult task for um, my opponent to do anything. I'm just really quickly reminding myself if there's anything else federal troops do. Do they prevent moves? I'm pretty sure that they don't. No, this aren't skirmish, burn, or influence, so we can't win over the neutral guy. Um, so that is the end of the pro-slavery player's turn. Okay. Now, the anti-player really doesn't want to play either of these two cards if he can avoid it. So the question is, does he want to move the federal troops, thus opening up Lynn County... Or would he rather get going in a different county? I think he'd rather get going in a different county. So he's going to play Topeka Constitution, and he is going to burn the city of Lecompton. Oops, 
Nope, that's the one for the election track. The burn marker is the one that goes here. Thus meaning that Douglas right now is leaning pro uh, anti-slavery. Pro anti-slavery. What? Just anti-slavery. Come on, Abby. It is early, though. Gonna draw a card here. Okay. So now would be a really good time recognizing the power that they have here to fight for it. But I gotta say, Bourbon County is sitting here as a free county that we can take. And I really like that idea. So we're actually going to apply the Marais de Cine. And I'm just going to go... Boop. Now, please note, you cannot move neutral cubes. Neutral cubes move is what's called migration. Um, which is an action you can trigger. Um... If I remember, the influence action only lets you take one cube, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that concludes the pro-slavery player's turn. Uh, giving him a very strong presence in southeastern Kansas in both Bourbon County and Lynn County. Now uh, let's draw a card. Hey, there we go. Um... So let's talk about how migration works. In migration, every single county gets, uh, you move all the, the neutral cubes to different counties. Now, migrancy can be very, very helpful in certain circumstances, but it's not always a very strong play. Um, the reason that migrant that migrating doesn't always help is it can be difficult to win a neutral cube to your side. Um, and so that's it's kind of tricky to really make the most of that particular I think. And migrant migration always happens. I guess the reason to really push for migration is if you wanted to give more opportunities to influence people. But you can only ever influence one cube at a time. Um, wait, is that a misprint? Was I playing the game right before? Yeah, this is a misprint on the player aid. And the rule, it very clearly states here that you add one for the faction cube as well. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that was, that's a misprint on the player aid. Um, I don't think this is an official player aid. I don't remember if it is or not. But you definitely get to add plus one if you have your faction cubes here, just like you do for a skirmish. Um, so that's an important thing that needs to be fixed. Let me make sure that's accurate for skirmishes now, too, in case those come up later, which I'm sure they will. Yeah, you had all faction points, so don't be silly. Anyway, um, so Migration is not a great card to play. Instead, I think we're going to play a double political action. Which just means they get to put down two markers, not one. Although the pro player is winning in a couple of important counties... We're going to be getting a victory point bonus for the 1854 election. Um, and that is a pretty nice feather to have in our caps. So let's draw a card here. 
Okay, we've got a bunch of influence cards here. We've also got a skirmish we could try. Um, I don't like my chances of winning in Douglas County, though. I've got a really good chance of winning over a cube here in Wyandotte County. And that could be important because, as you'll notice here, the anti-slavery player has... A lot of reinforcements that could potentially just kind of pour in here. Um, so that could be pretty bad news. Maybe that would be a smart play. Um, it's not lost on me, though, that we're actually falling behind on the election track. And we'd pretty much be guaranteed to win the skirmish in Lynn County. Oh, we can't skirmish because of the federal troops. And the only other place I could theoretically skirmish is here in Douglas County. And we'd have a plus one versus a plus two. I'm not saying we can't win that, but I'm saying it's it's a little bit risky. I could try to roll the influence though. Yes, I think that's worth trying. So I can pick any of my cards. We're going to pick Battle of the Spurs. And we're going to try to influence him. Now, in order to influence, you add plus one for every cube of your color. One. And one for every pro-faction town, or two if it's the capital. My pro-faction town's been burnt, so I can't use it. So I would just get a plus one to this die roll. I'm looking for a five or higher after I'm done rolling. Four plus one seems like five to me. So, the neutral cube is removed. And a pro cube is added. And just like that, Douglas has become a neutral county. Um, because the anti forces would have a total of two. One for Douglas, one for Lawrence. And the anti-pro forces have two for the two cubes they have. Um... So yeah, you definitely add for all your faction points, not just the one. Okay. That is the pro player. The pro player is off to a very strong start, mostly because the anti-player is really hamstrung by these... Ugh, I was afraid of this happening here. I was afraid of this happening. Oh well. Um, so... We could try influencing. And I'm a little bit concerned about Douglas County here being neutral now. <clears throat> so winning over some, some foreign settlers could be really smart. On the other hand, we also have the option to move into Leavenworth. I could then burn the town later on and give myself a county that way. I could also try to win over this neutral cube here in Potawatomi so that we could then move, uh, we could then spread out a bit, maybe go after Pawnee or Junction City. <clears throat> I have a lot of options here. I could put down one more political marker, but I'm, I'm not looking so great on the map. I definitely want to try to get an edge somehow. Um, I could move into Johnson County. That would be a very easy capture. But the thing I have to be concerned about is Wyandotte County. Um, because Wyandotte County has a pro-slavery capital, it counts as two faction points by itself. That means this is a very big stronghold for them. And that's not ideal. It means any county around it is going to be vulnerable, although I do have forces I can bring in here. Um, I think we're going to influence. And I'm going to pick the slavery card for a very important reason. Yes, the pro-slavery player could influence. I can't stop him from doing that with 
any of the three actions I've drawn, though. They all have the same thing. But if he chooses the other action, it doesn't really hurt me that much. Uh, politics is not a big deal at this point. So we're going to influence. We get to do ours first. And we're going to try to influence the neutral settler in Potawatomi County. So I'm going to get a plus two. One for my cube and one for my settlement there. And then we're going to roll the dice. Again, I need a five or higher. I got a five. Three plus two. Nicely done. Potawatomi is now a little bit more anti-slavery. However, because they played the other side's faction star, they now get to choose an action for free. And they can pick either option. Um, they can't influence in Paris County. That's important. They could influence in Kansas City, though. And I think that's a really smart play. I wouldn't do it with my own card, but since it's a free action anyway, I can basically try to make Wyan Dot a true pro-slavery stronghold. So I'm going, to, I'm going to get to add three to this die roll. Basically, as long as I don't get a one, uh, this is going to succeed. And we got a three. So you are no longer neutral. You are pro. Very nice. It is now the anti or the pro slavery player's proper turn. Okay. Moving would give them Johnson County. But I could also move into Anderson County, knowing that I have kind of a stranglehold here. Moving is almost always a strong play, but there's, there's other options too. I could try to win over this person in Riley County. That seems like a pretty small, a pretty strong play. I think we're gonna do that. So we're gonna play Battle of Blackjack to go ahead and influence this person in Riley County. So we're gonna get a plus two this time. One from a cube, one for a settlement. Which means I can't get a one or a two. A three, four, five, or six will, will make it happen. We got a three. And so Riley County is much more solidly pro slavery now. Uh, and that concludes their turn. Back to the anti player. Now. Does burning a town make us make any sense right now? It doesn't because I don't. I actually can't legally burn anywhere. Um, there isn't a pro-slavery town with one of my cubes in it. I really don't want to take the migration action, but. Damn it, game. Um, this is treason. That's the only way I can put it. It's treason. <sighs> Migrate, my, the migration action just isn't strong enough. It's almost never the right play. Um... It's almost never a good idea to play a migration action. Unless you're trying to basically steer it so that your counties, the ones you control, get the most migrants. So that you can so like pull them over to your side. Um, but the real question is, 
If I play one of the other cards, though, my problem is I'm giving the pro player a free move. And they could either move or influence, and I don't really want them doing either of those two things. So I think I will go ahead and take the migration action. So, what happens is, starting with the highest number county, which is 25, Dickinson County, every cube moves, every migrant cube moves one space to the west. If they're in 20 Clay or Dickinson, they actually get moved off the map. Um, or Morris, or Lyon, or Coffee, or Woodson. Um, as long as it goes west. So first... Davis, uh, let's pull you into Dickinson County. Um, that's 18. Okay, where's County 21? Oh, it's up here. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, 17, 16. Uh, I could pull it off the map if I wanted. I think. Yeah, uh, but I don't think I'm gonna. I think it's... Yeah, I think we do this. And this. Remember, it has to go west. You can't choose to send it somewhere else, so you move on to there. I'll move you into coffee... <clears throat> Move you into Osage. Are you six? You're six. Okay. Uh, here's County A. I'm going to move you into Shawnee. And I'm going to move you over Valley Falls. I'm going to move you into Jackson. Um, I really don't want this guy going to Olathe. Can I do a diagonal move? Yes. Yeah, because I really don't want to put this neutral cube in, uh, in Wyandotte. That seems like a bad idea. Or Natchison or Wyandotte. So I'm going to put it in Leavenworth. Sorry, not me. This guy. Um, you move to Anderson. And remember, this is the anti-slavery player making this decision, where all these cubes go. Um, and I'm going to move you over here. And then lastly, these cubes move. Um, having a migrant in Lynn County isn't bad because I know they can't do anything with it yet. You move. You move. You move. You move. And then last but not least, every Missouri county gets one additional migrant. So definitely kind of changed the board, so to speak. The board is definitely very different now. And it's going to affect how we play the rest of the game. It's still not an ideal move, though, because they get to react before I do. But at least I got to choose where the cubes went. And that meant we'd be in much a much better position potentially. Um, so it's going to draw a card. Okay. This is kind of a no-brainer. I'm going to play Kansas and Nebraska Act, and we're going to move this guy up here to Johnson County. And that way I can start trying to win this county over before the anti-slavery player can get involved. That's that. Why, game? Why do you hate me? Um, okay. Well... I think we are overdue to get some violence happening here. It's 2v2. It's not a perfect chance, but 
<clears throat> if we can win in Lawrence, that could be a pretty big advantage. Um, and it could open up the center, uh, south central Kansas, up to moving around. Um, hmm. And I didn't move any cubes in here deliberately. I'm kind of wishing I did now. <clears throat> I mean, I could... The other option is, of course, win over Manhattan. And then get really serious about Riley County. Uh, that's always an option. Is flip this cube and then go for the jugular in Riley County. But look, I keep getting crappy cards. I can't rely on getting good ones. I'm going to take the leap. And I'm going to do a skirmish. <clears throat> so each side is going to add up their faction points. That's going to be two for the anti and two for the pro. If LeCompton hadn't been burned, it would be three. And let me roll our dice. Okay, that's a seven. That's pretty good. That's also a seven. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, nothing happens. Uh, there is no tiebreaker. That is very unfortunate. I do still get like a consolation prize. I get an anti-violence marker here, which is, you know, not nothing, but it's certainly not what I'd hoped. Um, and then the pro save replay gets a free action. Right? They're going to say, that's a really great idea. Let's do that again. Uh, and they're going to, they're going to start a skirmish in Douglas County. So they're going to roll first. I could roll both, but... Meh. Ooh, it's an eight. The anti flash I really hope he pulls out a six here. This could be a big problem for them. Oof. So, if the difference is more than three, um, the first cube is actually just killed. So this cube is dead. And now, the anti player's gambit really did not pay off here. Because Douglas County is now very firmly pro-slavery. Uh, so that didn't work out. That was kind of yikes. If it had been much closer, by the way, we just pick to move the ant the other person's uh, cubes as we'd like. Uh, but that didn't happen here. Okay. So right now, let's, let's talk about the election track. All the pro player needs is one additional marker, and they have guaranteed themselves victory there. So it's kind of a lost cause. It is kind of a lost cause. Um, instead, I think we're going to try to build up some more pro-slavery support here in Johnson County. Uh, just, just see how this works out for us. So we're going to play the Dred Scott decision. And we're going to roll one die. We only add one to this. Need a five or six. And we got a seven. Okay. So one of the migrant cubes is now a pro-slavery cube. Things are not looking good for the anti-player right now. And a large part of that is just the fact that he keeps drawing pro-slavery cards instead of his own. Oh, good. Um, the Insurrection Joker is one action of your choice. Um, I am going to play to influence, and we're going to influence. Uh, here in Platt County. Because you can influence in any county. Even in the Missouri counties. Right? Hmm. 
Yes, that is accurate. So we just had a plus one here in Platte County, and we're hoping for greater than a five. Please, game, please. <laughs> well, that didn't work out. Man, this, these dice, these dice are, are being jerks today. Okay. So we've got a move, we've got influence. Um, so there's a big threat to these cubes, which is these cubes here. Especially if they can win over some influence here in Potawatomi, this becomes a very dangerous place to be pro-slavery. Um, I think we go for... I think we take Leavenworth before the anti-player can get entrenched there. So we're going to go and we're going to pick Blue Lodges. And we're going to move just one cube into Leavenworth. And this now gives me a much stronger position there. Um, and that concludes their turn. Okay, I've got an influencer political action. I'm gonna play this for an influence action. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna try to win over this last cube here. Um, so that is going to be one, two, three. So you have plus three to the die roll as long as it's not a one. Which it probably will be now that I said that. No, we succeeded. Good. Nice. Okay. Back to the pro player. Okay. Now, this actually presents an interesting opportunity. I really don't want to have to ever play that blue card if I can avoid it. And I can actually discard my entire hand right now and get a point. That is a pretty strong play at this point. Um, I don't really... I'm like, I could also just influence in Leavenworth, right? But I want to get rid of that blue card while I still can. Without helping my opponent. Because you've seen how bad that can be, right? Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to discard our entire hand. And the pro player is the first one on the board with a victory point. Um, and then they draw a fresh hand of two cards. And that turned out be beautifully. Look at that. They've got two very powerful cards used next turn. Okay. So I would really like to move my Potawatomi forces into Riley County. But I really don't want to do that now. Because if I do, it would be an even fight. And I don't want it to be even. I hopefully want to be able to burn the town. So instead I think we're going to influence using the Federal Troops card. And we're going to influence here in Shawnee County. Because it's a plus three. And it's a good thing that die landed the way it did. I was about to be very grumpy. Uh, and then that gets drawn. Okay. So, we cannot choose violence. We cannot skirmish anywhere right now. But we could burn Lawrence. Oh, and we have Orukis, the Fax and Star ability, and we can actually burn in an adjacent county instead. Um... That's actually kind of tempting.
Because eventually, anti-slavery forces are going to start taking over Lycans County. Right? I could also do two political markers, though. Or political... Mm. I wish I had a move. Um, a move would be very welcome right now, but I don't have it. I can't influence. So here's my problem, talking this out. I can't fight in Lynn County, and that's the only place where we have both pro and anti-slavery forces in the same county. I can't do that. So skirmish actions are useless to me right now. If I do stacking of Lawrence, yes, I could burn the city of Lawrence, but I've already got Douglas County, and most importantly, I can't burn a second city. So then I'd only be getting one action. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to play Lecompton Constitution. And first I'm going to move the federal troops. I'm sick and tired of dealing with this shit here. I want to be able to fight there. So I'm actually going to move them to Raleigh County. And I'm doing this because now all of a sudden this overwhelming force that the anti-slavery player has built is no longer useful. Yes, he could move in, but that would only result in a tie. But most importantly, he couldn't kill my troops. And then I can use my second action to go ahead and place... Ooh, or I could remove the burn in Douglas County instead. Oh, hang on. Or does it only work if the federal troops are in there? Are in there already? Oh, hang on just a minute here. Oh, I could do, I could just take the cooperation action twice. That's perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to come over here, make the Federals help out Raleigh County, and then I'm going to remove the burn marker on LeCompton. And just like that, um, I now have a stranglehold in Douglas County. That's very, very good for us. Okay. Very well played. Okay, we finally get a positive. We get Kansas statehood. But again, migration doesn't help us and we don't get a whole lot of benefit from doing two political markers, but I think I'm gonna do that anyway. We're gonna do two political markers. Um, thus ensuring that we will gain the victory point bonus from the 1854 election. That was, is kind of our only play, um, right now. So we're going to draw a card. I still can't skirmish and I still can't burn. I mean, okay, I could burn Lawrence, but that... Oh, no, 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 no. This is perfect. This is perfect. Yeah, we're going to play Sacking of Lawrence. First, we're Burning Lawrence. Where did you go, Lawrence? There you go. And then we're going to have a fight in Lynn County. So, uh, I get plus three. The Union player only gets one. This is a helpful little marker. I have no idea what most of the stuff is supposed to do. I feel like it's supposed to put the results somewhere, but if they are, I don't see where it's putting them. Uh, you can get game. Whatever, I'll go away here in a minute. 
Um, so we each roll our dice. I get a plus three in Lynn County for the pro four. That's a seven. Not the best roll, but a pretty solid roll. And that's a six. So what happens now is the winning player decides where this cube goes. Oh, and by the way, we get a second violence marker. Um, I'm going to send him over to... Bates County. <laughs> and at this point, the pro player is like, anti player is like, are you kidding me? Really, dude? Really? You're a jerk. Uh, but that is a legitimate move. You can even send them to a Missouri County. Just any adjacent county. <laughs> oh, the pro slavery player is is kind of running away with the map right now. Like, there's still lots of time left in this game. Um, but and it happened again. Now there isn't any way to discard your entire hand without getting a victory point, is there? Yeah, you can't just voluntarily discard your cards, unfortunately. Um, so I've got to make the most out of the cards I do have. And look, um... I really want to win over some migrants in, in Platte County if I can manage it. Because then I get a much stronger force that I can then take into Atchison or Leavenworth County. On the other hand, um, oh wait, can I send them to multiple counties? I think I can. So what I could do is I could go boop. Boop. That's giving me two counties. I think that's really the best play I've got. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go boop. And then boop. Then they get a move. Um, and boy. Shawnee County looks awfully weak right now. But I can't really risk it. Instead, they could influence, though. Yeah, they're going to influence to win this last person in Lynn County. That's what they're going to do with their actions. That's going to be uh, plus three. Basically, don't roll a one, and you'll succeed. And they didn't roll a one. And you're over there. So... No, I can only hope that the luck evens out a little bit. I will completely acknowledge that the... Um, can I just make it go away, please? I guess not. Anyway. Um, I, I kind of not... I, I do acknowledge this game is a bit luck-based, and in particular, the fact that the anti-player keeps drawing pro cards and only pro cards is really placing them in a pickle. Um, I can't discard my hand again. That's fine, though. Um, what would we like to do with our turn? Yeah, we're going to move. Um, so I'm going to pick... Ooh, hang on. If I move, I actually give the anti-player an action. I don't want to do that. 
I can't skirmish anywhere. I could just take two political actions um, and just get this nonsense over with, this, this first round anyway. Because nothing else here really makes sense to me. So we're going to do that. We're going to Kane Charles Sumner. Um, so I get to place two political markers. And then we immediately decide who won the first election track. And it's very clearly the anti-player. That's going to earn them two victory points. So congratulations to the anti-player. Um, it will then be the pro-slavery. The pro... Uh, the anti-slavery player's turn. Um, so the anti-player is winning, so to speak, but they're spread very, very thin. They don't really have multiple strongholds, and that's very, very concerning if you are the anti-player right now. Um, too much of their strength is still in Missouri. They need to they need to get get that under control this turn, if they can. Okay. There could not have been a worse fucking time to draw this card. Because I can't use it. I mean, I could play the card and do nothing with it, but that would be a waste of what's, a, what's genuinely a pretty good card. Uh, I can't burn. Oh, no, wait. You can burn in an adjacent county, can't you? You can. And burning Leavenworth would set things up nicely for us to, to make a decision later on. Um, I can't burn Pawnee. I could burn Paris, but it wouldn't really matter. Yeah, I think we're going to play John Brown, and we're going to burn the adjacent county. We're going to burn um, Leavenworth. If you burn a capital, by the way, it just reduces the influence from two to one. Uh, and then I get an anti-violence marker. Draw. Can't skirmish, can't cooperate. Oh, wait a minute. Did we do the migrant? the migration or does do we not do a migration because it's technically not an election okay so we actually do the migration action first and the pro player gets to decide where people migrate this could be pretty important so you are removed from the board mr 25 uh, 24, 23, 22, 21, 19, no, 20 is the next one. Let's send them up to Morris County. Let's send you over to Davis County. Seventeen, sixteen. Um, let's move you into Lyon County. Let's move you into Lyon County. Um, I can't really move you somewhere that doesn't help the pro play, the anti player. So I just have to accept it that they're gonna have basically a fourth cube. Uh, I can't really stop that from happening. Uh, Anderson into Woodson, Franklin into co Coffee. Remember, only one cube moves, even if there's two in an area. Oh, you're going to move up to Jackson. Did I move this guy in Franklin? Yes, I did. I moved one from Franklin to Coffee. That's right. Uh, so next is Leavenworth. Uh, you're going to move up here to Atchison because that benefits me as the pro player. Uh, I'm going to move you into Leavenworth. I don't think you can move to Kansas City because I'd just be south. It has to be west, northwest, or southwest. That's just south. Uh, I am going to move you, however. Uh, you're going to move over here. 
you're gonna move up here, you're gonna move over here, and you're gonna move over here. Then we restock each county with new migrants. So that happened automatically at the end of every election. I forgot it even happens in 1854, despite the fact there is no actual election in 1854. Um, and there we go, done. Not to decide what we're going to play. So, another migration action doesn't really help me. It doesn't hurt me, but it doesn't help me. It would be kind of silly to play it for that. And I can't skirmish anywhere. I can play the skirmish card just to get the violence marker, but that seems like kind of a waste. What I really want to do is move. And therein lies the problem. And that if I play this card, it's going to give the anti-player a bonus action. I think the benefit of moving so strongly outweighs the benefit of, sta of, of any bonus action that I'm going to do it without hesitation. He'll get a free action, but I can get to go one and two. And now these two counties are now pro-slavery. I'm really setting myself up for a really big payday in the 1855 election, provided that the anti-player doesn't do something squirrely. Um, now they can move, and they definitely want to move. The question is, where do they want to move? Um, we could make Lynn a proper battleground again, or we could strengthen our hold in Likens County. We could move into Bourbon County. No, I can't go into Bourbon County. They're not quite touching. Um, I am somewhat concerned that they might try to go after Topeka next. But there's just too many other easy targets that I think it doesn't make sense for them to do that. Um, I don't want to move into Riley until I get the extra cubes that I want. So I think moving into Missouri, moving into Atchison County, I think is the right play. I think. I could strengthen, strengthen my hold in Likens County though, which I could then start turning these cubes. Actually, that makes more sense. Let's do it. Boop. And that is the pro player's turn is done. Game, would you fucking quit? Oh my gosh, this is, this has just been bloody ridiculous. I mean, there's tons of cool things I could do here, but I just keep getting screwed. Like, holy shit, game. Stop making the anti-player draw all the pro cards. Oh, I gotta play something. Um, I'm very salty right now as the anti-player that I keep getting these same cards over and over again. Gross. Um, so definitely gonna influence... The million dollar question is, do I influence in Likens County or do I influence in Pottawatomie County? I think we do, no. We do Likens County and here's why. No, we do Pottawatomie. I just want to get it over with. So I'll play Pierce for that. Um, I'm not even gonna roll. No, I do have to roll, don't I? Because I could still get... No, if I get a 1, I would succeed anyway, so I'm not even going to bother rolling. Because um, 1 plus 4 is 5, and a 5 is all you need to succeed. Now, they could choose to influence... They could choose to place a political marker. Um... Converting this cube in Kansas City gives us flexibility 
And so we're gonna do that. Uh, I can't roll a one, but anything else will succeed. Oh, man, I saw that one. And uh, I was kind of getting excited there, but no. I tell you, once we shuffle the deck, um, the fucking RNGesus had better give the anti-player a bit of a hand because, oh my word. Okay. So, as a reminder, can't skirmish, can't burn. Could cooperate? Like, so, it, here's what I'm thinking. thinking. This is why I'm thinking about cooperating. I know if I move the federal troops that Riley County is going to be very, very difficult for me to hold. But, but, um... Losing Riley County isn't the end of the world. And let's just face it, they could easily just move three cubes into Riley County and they take it. They could move all their cubes in Riley County and they take it anyway. Um. <clears throat> Whereas moving the federal troops over to say Lynn County forces them to consider a different angle of approach. Or even better would be a place like Atchison or Johnson County where there's a real chance that the anti-player could actually make an impressive move. Um, I think going to Atchison is, is the better call. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play Free Satyrs. I mean, I could remove a burn marker, but I don't, none of my towns have been burnt. Oh, no, Leavenworth has been burnt. Yeah, let's do that. Let's, let's free Leavenworth. Give us a nice stranglehold over Leavenworth County. Um, and then over to the anti-player... Okay, so we get a skirmish or a cooperate. Now, unlike the anti-player, I have every reason to want to move this, but I have also a much better, uh, a much better option here. I'm going to remove the burn marker here in Lynn County. This county, my friends, is now completely up for grabs. And that's going to force, for the first time in a while, the anti-player to react something, or the pro-player to react something that the anti-player did. Um, and they could just burn the city again. I don't really see any reason why they wouldn't, so I think they'll do that. That's right, because it, it forced them to waste a card play. And then violence. Okay, I was just thinking to myself, I could release a move or an influence, and I got both. Um, turning Lycans into an instant fatter, into an instant anti stronghold would be pretty great. Or we could try it up here in Platte County in Missouri. Like, this instantly would open up the board hugely. It's almost better than moving. Yeah, let's do it. Let's play the Wide Awakes. Oh, let's get a double influence and in Lycans County. So I can't get a... Oh, no, sorry, it's a three because of Ottawachi. Sorry. Oshawatomi? I think that's how that said. Um, I just can't get a one. 
and then I'll flip a cube. I very manifestly did not get a one. Now things are starting to turn around. And then I have a plus four. I can't fail this roll. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring in a second person here. Now all of a sudden, the the pro stranglehold on the southeast looks real vulnerable right now. I can do all kinds of damage with these cubes. Uh, I'm pretty happy about that. That was the perfect time to get that card. Okay. Now they could do some influencing and of their own. So Lynn County is a pretty good idea. I think we'll do that. So we're definitely gonna do that to start out with is we're gonna roll a plus two for an in Lynn County here. And we succeed. I don't think we've ever fit. No, we actually have failed a couple influence rolls, but only the the pro the anti players ever failed it. And then the question is, do we move or do we influence again? And I see the potential to get even more reinforcements. I think we're going to do Leavenworth. So we're going to roll here, and we get a five, just enough to get us another butternut cube. I keep calling them brown cubes. They're supposed to be butternut though. So that concludes the pro slavery player's turn. <sighs> really game? I'm like, okay, a politics marker is not nothing right now. But an influence marker would only help if I can succeed up in Missouri, which I haven't done yet. I think we're gonna try it though. It's just it's just too good. There's too much potential for us to get a strong force that we can use later on. I think I don't think a politics marker is worth the potential to finally get stronger up there. So it's just a plus one. a one again i don't know why i keep trying um one of these days i'll learn my lesson but today is not that day okay can't skirmish can't burn i could do another migration action um but i don't really see the benefit to that Cooperate. Okay, if I sent federal troops to protect Anderson County. No, that wouldn't be good enough. Because, see, here's the problem. With Anderson County, they would just need two cubes there. And they would instantly win it. Um, and I have every expectation they're going to spread out from Likens County. For sure. Migration action wouldn't be terrible, actually. Because right now my problem is, as the Butternut player, is that... Um, like, they don't have anyone they can even influence. So that's a really positive sign. But, hmm. No, I think cooperation is more useful. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move federal troops to somewhere that's going to make it hard for them to move in. Um... I think we're going to protect Lynn County. And that is that is the pro player's turn. And they draw a card. Gross. The thing is, I really want to move. I'm kind of trapped 
into what I can do until I do move. And so the border ruffians, oh, hang on a minute. I, oh, oh, thank God. Thank goodness. I'm just going to discard my whole hand. I can because I have six different symbols. And I get a victory point. But more importantly, I get those two pro-slavery cards out of my hand. Nice. Oh, sorry. And then I draw two more cards. And hey, that looks like a much better hand than I had before. Draw a card. Um, I'm going to take a politics marker. Uh, I don't want it to be super easy for the anti-player to win the way they did last time. Draw. Okay. Moving is really important. Uh, a double influence, though, or can't you just do an influence of the plus two? Isn't that an option? Oh, no, you get to place a faction cube in Missouri. Um. Man. Hmm. Would that be useful, though? Would it be useful to get a faction cube in Platt, Missouri? Which would then let me try to turn this over, but the problem is, this is going to be real hard to break into. This swath here will be quite challenging. I think I need to move. Um, I need to move, and... I think we're going to move everything into Riley County. We're going to try to make a push here. Wait, it's five cubes per faction, right? Or is it five cubes total? Yeah, if there's more than it's it's per faction, you get to have ten cubes in one county. Okay, that is the anti-player's turn complete. Now they're getting in a really nasty situation here. Um, where they are kind of like I was earlier. And as boring as it is, as unhelpful as it often is, they're going to play Doc Jenison to do a migration again because it's better than giving them a free thing. So, move, move, move. Uh, you get moved off the map, so you just go back over there. Move. Um. Fine. I'm gonna put you in Coffee County. I don't want to give them someone to win over there. Jackson County is nice and irrelevant. Uh, let's bump you up to Anderson County. Let's move you into Douglas County. And then we do the Missouri counties. It's going to be one, two, three, four. Five. And there, and then again, new migrant in each county there. If we can ever get a bit of a boost in Johnson County, we could get real scary up there. Because we have, as a pro player, we have quite a strong force there. A scary force, one might say. Okay. Um, so... Draw card. Okie dokie. So. I kind of want to skirmish in Pawnee. But I'd really do that after I burnt Pawnee. And I don't have a burn action right now. 
I could play a double influence or I could play a move. Yeah, I'm gonna play a move just because there's just no reason to keep everybody where they are right now. Um, so I what I could instantly win two counties by going one, two, three, four. I am opening the door for them to move into Lycans County, and there's always a chance they might do that, but I still think that was the right play. Um, I feel pretty strongly about that being a good play. So, now they can move. The question is, do they want to? And the answer is, hell yes. Um, they're going to move you two to here. And here's why. Now, with some influence actions, I can make this into an incredibly scary place for the anti-forces to operate in. Uh, I feel pretty happy about that. I could have gone really sneaky and just swapped with them and just moved into Riley County or Pottawatomie County. Is that actually what I want to do? Hmm. Actually. So here's the reason why I wouldn't do that. If I move these two cubes into Potawatomi, I'll win Manhattan in the election. But then they can easily take Junction City. I could do one of each. Which would give me Junction City and make Potawatomi tied. But if I separate these cubes off, they're just going to get picked off by the anti-forces here. I think my best chances are to do what I said before. I'm going to move two cubes into here. And done. I'm just, I, I, I don't think it's worth, because I've tied up a huge percentage of federal troops out here. It's going to take them a long time. Not federal troops, sorry, anti-troops. It's going to take a long time for those anti-troops to be in a position to be really effective. Uh, so we're going to do this. Damn it, I'm not getting burned. As the anti-player, I have a lot invested in winning Riley County and then spreading out. But I have to win Riley County first. And that's going to be a tough sell if I haven't burnt the city of Pawnee. I don't like my chances enough there. Um, but a skirmish down here in Anderson or Franklin could actually be quite beneficial. Let's do it. Let's do a skirmish in Franklin County. So, uh, first things first, I get to place an election violence marker on the track here. Uh, I get a plus two, they get a plus one. Now, if I keep rolling like shit, it's not going to matter what I get, but I'm hoping that we'll have... Okay, I cannot possibly lose this battle now, which is excellent news. The question is, do I get to kill the cube or just chase it away? I get to chase it away. Um, I'm going to chase this cube into Lynn County because let's be honest here, no matter how strong they are there, it's better than giving them a free cube somewhere else. So I'm pretty happy about that. I also could have done Influence and Anderson, um, but I didn't, so that's fine. Draw a card. Okay, mover politics. Making Anderson a big fight actually sounds like a really good idea. Or I could just go into Likens County now and claim it. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into Likens County. And just be like, boop. So that is the pro player's turn finished. I am, I cannot buy a burn marker right now. Come on, game. Don't be like that. Um, okay. Well. I mean, I could just try Missouri again. 
and then take this cube and garnet. That would be pretty handy. Yeah, and then we can play Law and Order League next turn and try to and try to kill this cube here. Okay, so I'm playing uh, Abolition for two influence actions. I'm first going to influence here in Anderson. That's a plus two. I got to get a three or better. Oh, okay. It's fine. Everything's fine. Done. Next, I get to do a second influence action, and I'm going to try to influence way up here in Platte County again. Here I need a four, five, or six. And we got the six. Holy shit. It finally happened. Uh, we're actually getting a decent sized pro force now up here. Okay. That was a very good turn. Finally. Oh, the anti player, if he knew what they were staring at here, would be very, very happy right now. Um. The question is which card do I want to play now? The Leavenworth Constitution would hurt me the least. Like, yes, he can move the federal troops. Um, or remove a burn marker. That would actually be not a great thing. Whereas I could also burn Oshawatomie in Likens County. I don't want to fight. Actually, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Because here's the thing. It's only a one modifier difference. And it could be a two modifier difference if they either get some reinforcements. Oh, I could have influenced in Potawatomi. I didn't think of that. Because uh, I have a faction point because of my town here. If they won that battle, it would be incredibly huge. So huge. And it's a very winnable battle, actually. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to do. They're going to play a Wyandotte Constitution, and they're going to start a skirmish in Riley County. So first things first, that's a violence marker for them. And then uh, that's a plus four for you and a plus three for you. Gonna roll pro first. Oh dear. Uh oh. Yeah, so that went by a lot. Oh well. So this cube is dead. But then the pro player gets to decide where this cube retreats. He's gonna retreat to Junction City. Um, cause that at least gives him a county. Um, but that went about as badly as it could have. And then the anti-player is going to say, a skirmish, what a lovely idea. We're going to fight down here in Anderson County. That's a plus three for you and a plus one for you. That ends up being a four. Oh, dear. That's a five. So what happens here is actually pretty significant. Um, what's going to happen is we're each going to remove all cubes until they're out of the county. Uh, so uh, the winner gets to pick first. I'm going to send you to Allen County. And the any player is like, that's fine. I'm going to go over here to Burlington County. Do I have to go to different counties? We'll have to go to different counties. Yeah, and we're just going to say, okay, fine. Enjoy being in Allen County. That's worth nothing. Um, so, that backfired on both players, actually. Um, but that's still a very good thing for the anti-player that that card was played. And now he gets to take his next turn. And we're going to draw. 
Oh, wow. A double move right now? Or a plus two to a skirmish? I actually can't skirmish right now. Oh, man. Um, that's an interesting time to get that card. I'm going to do two separate moves. I think that makes more sense than doing a giant super move. Uh, we're going to do... Um, one, two. And then... We're gonna do one, two, done. They get the last card, which means I have to reshuffle. Um, fighting a skirmish in Anderson could be beneficial. Or fighting one in Junction City, those could both be pretty beneficial. But I think at this point, we need to influence. I want influence over here. Um, so as long as I don't get a one, that's gonna be a free cube for the pro forces here. And I didn't get a one. Because what's this, this brings up, this is building me up a pretty big force so that I can start thinking about going farther west and causing a lot of havoc. You can even go fight Missouri if you wanted to. Um, but that's that. Okay. So influencing. Maybe. could do a skirmish and try to win in Anderson County. Um, I don't really think that's a great move though. I kind of need to get some, some migrant cubes into Shawnee County because that gives me a strong way to turn a flip them. Um, Getting this guy in Potomotomy wouldn't really help. A third person in Missouri could be beneficial, though. I think we'll do that. I think we'll try to do Missouri. So I get a plus two. As long as I don't roll a one or a two, then we will succeed. Got a five. Perfect. That'll work. Okay, so they get a move or a skirmish, and I think the thing is, unless I could guarantee a kill either here or here, it just doesn't make sense for the pro player to start a fight that he might lose. Because if he loses it by enough, he'll lose his cube. Um, you know, I guess over here, actually... It's worth it, cause as long as they w like, even if they even if they lose this cube, oh well, that doesn't really hurt them, cause so many of these western co counties are just not very well populated. But if they win, they can really break things up. So I think they're actually going to go ahead and they're going to start a fight. They're going to start a fight here in Davis County. So that's going to be plus one for Butternut and plus two for Blue. Rolling, rolling, rolling. They get a four. A respectable result, but maybe not ideal. And they get a seven. So seven is three more than four. So this cube just dies. And at this point, the pro player just kind of shrugs and says nothing ventured, nothing gained. It would have been really awesome if they could have won that, but they didn't. Um, and that concludes the pro player's turn. Okay, a double move or a double skirmish right now? 
Oh, man. Oh, that would be very interesting. Wait, is it all? If you do the double move from up to five adjacent counties? Oh my gosh. We could jump the pro-slavery capital. Let's fucking go. I go to Savoy because my faction star it means I can move all five cubes here. This is setting up a stage for a potentially big super giant fight. Uh, that's very scary. Okay. Now two politics markers would guarantee them the bonus. But they could also use Old Springfield, which adds plus two, making this an even fight. Be five on five. Yeah, you, you basically say, I'm using Old Springfield, which is a can to change of both sides during the fight. Ooh. I think this is the perfect time to do a giant fight here. So. Oh, that is a violence marker here. Uh, they have now one, two, three, four, five, six. They're guaranteed to succeed here. Um, because the best that they the anti players can do is five. Each side gets a plus five die roll. Because it's five cubes, but it's one, two, three, because capital counts as two, plus two for playing the facts and star version. If the anti forces win here, it's it's not great. But if the pro forces win, this giant force that's been built up gets scattered to the four winds again. Uh, I'm here for it. So so that's what's going to happen here. Oops. I'm apparently rolling cubes for fun. Oh, no. Oh, the pro player like saw that five and it just thunk. Oh, man. Yeah, that cube is the deadest any cube has ever been in cube history. But that's actually not that big a deal, right? Like, yes, they do control the pro-slavery capital right now, which is definitely not a bad thing. But there's also lots and lots of pro-forces right around it. It would not be difficult at all for there to be a second fight down the line. So, plus it guaranteed them two victory points. Um, and that by itself is worth the price of admission. Okay. I think the anti-player is kind of intrigued by the you know, forcing the election right now. Um, I could move federal troops to Jackson, Johnson County. I'm gonna do it for a very specific reason. It would stop them from getting their fifth cube. But I don't know if that's really worth my time. I am gonna move, oh, you know what? I could tie here in Lynn County if I, rem if I remove the burn marker. Let's do it. Let's remove the burn marker in Lynn County. That's done. Well, that's not great news. Um, 
And they can't burn Mound City now. So that's annoying. So if I move everything, if I move three fourths into Johnson County, Johnson becomes tied. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll play this card to move. No, wait, no, I won't. Very important reason for doing that. Then they just burn Topeka or Fairway rather, and that would give them the edge. It would then be five to four. Um. So actually, I don't want to play either of these. I'm going to play Leavenworth Constitution. And I'm going to move the Federal Troops to Wyandotte. And what this does is it means if I do get a move, uh, I'm going to win that. I'm going to win that county. They can't stop me. Uh, they can either move troops or they can take a political marker. A political marker is not going to help them. I think they're going to repair the burn in Douglas County. So that's done. Okay, draw a card. And then I have to think back in one moment. I am back now. Uh, so, we're getting to the point we got to last time where... I really don't want my hand to fill with pro slavery cards to the point where I can no longer play them. I could try to influence down here in Mound City. Because if I can win this cube over, um then it would be a flat tie. Right now I'm still losing there. I could try to start a fight in Anderson County. Yeah, I think I will. I'm actually gonna play this card deliberately. And that's gonna be a violence marker. For a very for a very simple reason because I'm gonna have to play a, an anti slavery card anyway. And I don't want to get to the point where I have to do it. So that's gonna be a skirmish here, and that's gonna be plus two for me and plus one for the anti player, or plus one for the pro. Player. I don't know. Why I keep getting them confused. Probably because I'm an idiot. Uh, okay, so that's a victory. The question is just whether he's dead or whether he has to run away. Uh, he's dead. That was a very good fight. Now, he cannot skirmish um, because there are no other places. He could move federal troops or cure a burn marker or what's the other thing? We would both have to move. Hmm. Yeah, I think they're just not going to take an action. They would very much... No, actually, they do want to take an action here. Let's move the federal troops to Douglas. Because this now stops them from just coming in en masse, burning LeCompton, and trying to take this town, this area back. Um, okay. Friends, I think we would actually make this a two-episode game, um, just because it feels like it's running kind of long. Um, so after the 1855 election, we're going to do a second, uh, we'll do our second playthrough next time. So, drawing a card. No, they're going to play the move. And they're going to do this. All we want to do, we just want to dispute it. 
either forcing them to fight us, a fight they'll probably lose, or tying it. Because then it goes down to who controls the most adjacent counties. Um, and in that particular case, that would be a beneficial thing for us. So that is their turn. I draw a card. Plus they could win a cube and then could take it from there. Um, we're gonna play blue lodges to move. I just need to decide where I'm going to move. I wish I had, no, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna move both of these into Lynn County because I control most of the adjacent counties. So that's, that's gonna go well, I think. Plus we can then try to win that cube over to the other side. Um, Forcing the election now wouldn't be a bad decision. And to be honest, I just kind of want to see how it's going to turn out. So they're going to go and play Abe Lincoln and they're going to play a political marker. We now start the 1855 election. So let's walk through how an election works. So we're going to count the number of counties that have settlements. And we're going to put a political marker in there just to remind us who controls each county. So starting with the number one, we have one, two, three, four, five for the anti. One, two, three, four, five for the pro. Um, so then it will go to a tiebreaker. So this would be the Kansas counties adjacent. They control Leavenworth and they control Johnson. So that would be enough to give this as a victory to the pro player. Leavenworth is three to zero. That's pro. Atchison is one to zero. That's pro. Jefferson is one to zero. That's anti. Douglas is three to one, that's pro. Likens is two to one, that's pro. Franklin is two to zero, so that's pro. Ainty rather, sorry. Um Lycan or Lynn County is three to two, so that's anti. Bourbon is one to nothing, so that's pro. Uh, coffee is one to nothing, so that's anti. That then gives us three antis and one pro there. I think if it's empty, though, no one can win it. Oh, no, it would have influence from surrounding counties, so then that actually counts as an anti. Because it's three to one. Um, Shawnee counts as anti because it's two to nothing. Uh, Potawatomi counts as as anti because it's one to nothing junction city counts as anti because it's two to zero and riley counts as anti because it's two to one so have all counties been settled all of these settled counties should all have a marker in them and they do so now we count up how many oh we didn't count johnson county yet my bad uh, that's going to be a very clear pro because it's one to nothing okay so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven counties for the pros. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the antis. So that's nine V seven. That's two victory points for them. And then they got two for winning the election track. So that was a good election for the anti player. Um, but I don't think that's gonna last. 
And I think, as we'll see in the next episode, it's going to be a bit more challenging. So the last thing I'm going to do real quick, like, is I'm just going to go ahead and delete these markers because they don't matter anymore. Let me just make sure there are meant to be 16 numbered counties. Oh, actually, last thing we need to do is we do need to do a migration thing here. Uh, let me look at county control. I'm just trying to figure out, I'm just trying to make sure that I didn't miss any important counties. Oh, no, there's 17 counties. And I said nine and seven. Which county did I not count? Okay, I got to do this really quickly again. So it's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Nine, and they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ninety seven is sixteen. Are we sure it's seventeen counties? definitely 17. Should it be 9 versus 8? Let me see here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, Nine. Uh, friends, I keep coming up with nine and seven. I'm sure I'm missing something important here. All right, let's do this whole thing again. Let's just do this one more time and then we'll do the migration and then that'll be uh, the end of the episode. So, okay. So we're gonna do anti-marker. Let's start here. Riley is anti. St. Mary's uh, Potawatomi is anti. Davis is anti. Shawnee is anti. Osage is anti. Coffee is anti. We're going to come back to the empty counties or the counties that are tied. Jefferson is anti. Atchison is pro. Leavenworth is pro. Wyandotte is pro because of all the counties surrounding it. Johnson is pro. Likens is pro. Lynn is anti. Franklin is anti. Berman is pro. Anderson is anti. Is there any circle county that doesn't have a marker in it? No. Okay. Pro counties. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I missed Douglas. Uh, Douglas is pro. Maybe that's the county I kept missing. Sorry if you're like shouting at your computer screen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's seven pro. 
and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten ante. Okay. So it's actually undercounting an anti colony. So that actually gives 10 to 7 is 3 points for the anti player. Okay, so after I clear out all the markers, sorry that took so long, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the last migration. Now, because the pro player is behind on points, they get to choose how the migration happens. Um, so. Oh, remember, highest numbers start first. These get removed from the board. Um, twenty three can go to twenty five. You move up. You move up. You move over. Uh, this is going to be bad no matter where it moves, so whatever. Uh, 13 goes there. Um, I'm going to move up to there because it's... No, yeah, it's northwest. Uh, this is going to move northwest. This is going to move northwest. Northwest. West. West, west, northwest, west, west, west. And then, I know I didn't do that in the right order, um, but I'm just trying to make sure this gets finished. And there, and there, and there, and there. So... Uh, next time, it'll be the pro player's turn, and we'll be starting off building up to the 1857 election. <clears throat> I hope you all have enjoyed this video and that you understand how to play Bleeding Kansas. Please join me next week when we'll be playing uh, the second half of the game, and it should be really interesting. Uh, the anti play does have a bit of a lead, but it's certainly not a decisive one. Um... Anything can still very much happen with a bit of luck. Uh, but until next time, this has been Guardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.